Part six, meeting of Los Angeles City Council or Lee Bryant, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Councilmember Byron. Here. Councilmember Goblin. Here. Councilmember Mazzorti. Here. Councilmember Stevenson. Here. Councilmember Breaker. Here. Councilmember Morris. Here. Mayor Long. Here. Approval of the minutes from the February 6th meeting. Uh, I have a motion over here. Rick, did you want to second it? I give. Okay, I have a motion for a second. Any further discussion? Call for the vote, please. Councilmember Byerly? Yes. Councilmember Conklin? Yes. Councilmember Mazzorti? Yes. Councilmember Stevenson? Yes. Councilmember Brinker? Yes. Councilmember Morris? Yes. <coughs> Mayor Long? Yes. Public comments? Anyone here uh, other than what's on the agenda? To mess up? Do you have anything, Greg? Uh, use requests. In this case, he fixes the computer. Um, we have uh, Thera here from downtown Lock Haven for the first request. Hi. So we just have two requests. Um, Brandy Bodo uh, wanted to partner with us for a new event um, called Trump or Pinwheels in the Park. I guess they did this event in Williamsport. We couldn't be here today to explain because she's working until seven. Um, but I guess they did this in Williamsport for Child Abuse Awareness Month where they held an event and had meals that you could put in the park and when kind of go with them. So she has an event date for possibly the 15th with a rain date of the 22nd. <clears throat> For the use of Triangle Park, um, and she wanted to know if she could hang a banner for the entire month of April. So I told her I would put, I helped her fill out the paperwork, and she's initially the first lead on this. I'm saying that correctly. Um, and the second request would be for the use of Triangle Park. Um, the East Main Street parking lot and Main Street for the annual Best of Glen County Community event to be held on June 17th. Um, during the event, Main Street's closure from J to Mill um, would be closed, and we would use the East Main Street parking lot for the event as well as Triangle Park. Uh, and then for the parade, it would then be closed from North Henderson for the Triangle for the parade routes and then reopen after that part of reopen after the break. You want to have questions for? No, I asked Casey if they filled out a blue sheet and we said they submitted the letter and she has already reviewed them. So they all meet the insurance and the other criteria that we require. So I'll move mm -hmm. those three requests. Motion on the floor. Second. And a second. Any further discussion? Yes. Um, is there a way that we could, I, I think it's great um, putting out the, the awareness. Um, it's very important that we uh, make awareness of child abuse uh, public and, and it's a major concern, you know, I'm a teacher and I, I see, uh, yeah, I, I get it. Is there a way that we could limit not a whole entire month and just have it the week that they put the pinwheels up. And let me just explain my, my thoughts behind it. Um, I just think about all the other awarenesses that are out there that are very important. And if somebody came up to us every month and we designated the gazebo for a whole entire month, there's some other good cancer, you know, like April is cancer control month. You know, if an organization wanted to come up and, and want to do the exact same thing, then we, are limiting ourselves to other organizations um, as well, you know, like national voluntary 
uh, volunteer month, school library month. And I don't know if the library would ever want to do something like that too. But if we designate the gazebo for a whole entire month, then another organization might want to come up and they don't have the space to do that. And if they're doing the pinwheels that, that week, could we just have it up that, that week? So that way another organization that is rightfully so has the ability to do that. I guess your question would be owed to the person who made the motion if they want to modify the yeah. motion or if they want to leave. Oh, I read it differently. You know, I see the only one they want to hang a banner for the month, but they're only requesting the park for the day. That the Correct. Event. So my thought was if we could put the banner up there for the week that they're going to put the pinwheels up on that day, that way now we got three other weeks available if another organization wants to do something similar because now they're, they're going to be like, wow, we're using the zebra for that, um, just giving an opportunity for other organizations to do that. Uh, the gazebos uses one day, but the banner, we always encourage them to do like the week before the event or two, so you advertise and build up right. to it. They spend hundreds of dollars for a banner, so to put it up for one week sort of is not cost prohibitive. Uh, they ask for a month, but uh, we run it through Casey, and she, she does the scheduling. So if somebody else comes along, they have to take the open dates. I don't know, maybe a month is too long. Maybe we should think about that in the future and limit it to. When we've had attached organizations that if there was a conflict like Rotary and um, Vets Plus, like they just work together for the event. So sure. sometimes they're able to make it work where they can both do something at the same time. Well, I think, I think we are. Don't mind yeah. I think if we if we have a plethora of things that come to us, then we can always adjust. I don't think there's there's anything wrong with right now. We don't have a bunch of people asking. Not for that. April. We have nobody right. else asking, mm -hmm. so don't take it down if nobody else is going to use it anyway. And uh, but again, it's, it's up to they should have asked, but they should have asked by now because to you apply to PennDOT and get permission for your banner, they're they're late to the game here. So well, for this one, they don't need to apply to PennDOT because it's they put it on at trying to yeah. it's, it's going on the gazebo. Yeah, right? it's not up yeah. across the street. Like, so on the ground in front of is where the pictures mm -hmm. are in the gazebo, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not going to amend my motion. I wanted to step a motion on the floor. Any further discussion? I, I want to just ask. I mean, Casey, this is something that we don't have anybody else wanting to use Triangle Park. So if someone else did come along and say, we'd like to use Triangle Park, we want to put a banner up. These folks would have to understand if they've had theirs up, that their banner would have to come down for somebody else to come up. Is that realistic? Um, no, we'd have to vote on that show. Right. We would, If we've given a vote, then that banner right. is there. Uh, now, it doesn't mean that we couldn't amend that and if, you know, if we chose to. But then on the flip side, if I know, you know, if somebody's watching or gets wind of it, it's going to be up there for a month. I would personally surprise say, well, that's up there for the entire month. I don't even have a chance for that. I wouldn't even acknowledge that I had that opportunity. I'm just saying that just food for thought with that. The rain date of the 22nd is Earth Day, and you almost always get a request for the use of the park on Earth Day, it's usually in conjunction with Lock Haven University and some uh, local residents. So that would be an example where if that rain date came into play, it would be a share of the park kind of atmosphere. So Earth Day would have pinwheels associated with it too. But um, I think that that's something that um, we can just Casey can explain to them your your rain day pick mm -hmm. coordinates with another holiday, so you may have it. And this is like a passive event that, like for the like you know for the most part, it's not something right. that get in the way like right. So, any other comments or questions? <clears throat> just to point out that. <clears throat> Uh, although people might want to book the use of physical resources for a given event, a given signature, the fact that <clears throat> portions of time are not necessarily mutually exclusive. And because April is Child Awareness Month, doesn't mean to say it can't also be Senior Cyclist Month or anything else it wants to do. 
So I don't think we need to get too tangled up in that, providing we're not, you know, kind of double booking our physical assets. So I'm comfortable with it the way it stands. Any other comments, questions? Okay, I have a motion to floor and a second. Please call for the vote. Councilmember Byerly. Yes. Councilmember Conklin. Yes. Councilmember Mazzorti. Yes. Councilmember Stevenson. Yes. Councilmember Brinker. Yes. Councilmember Morris. Yes. Mayor Long. Yes. Thank you. Okay, 4B request from the oh, yeah, That's part of that. Excuse me. Um, the use of city lot off Ray Street. We have a member of Clinton County Probation here, and I don't know if Abby, you want to speak on this as well for the community garden. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was approached by uh, Clinton County Probation for uh, they're looking to implement a community garden in the city um, that we could easily access before they had a garden out at the conservation district, which involved transportation. Um, so they asked for kind of some lots that we've been looking at. Um, and I offered the little lot down at the edge of the airport by Gray Street. Um, and we kind of pinpointed that as a possible place for a community garden in the past, um, just because can't build anything on it with the runway there, gain no clearance. Um, so it's not like a good use for it. There's also already water there. Um, and it's close enough for the, uh, the groups to go to So if this is approved, they would start as soon as possible. Um, it is about 900 feet from the city's Piper building, and it does have a little garage. It's not the best shaped garage, but it does have a little garage on it. Um, you'll know the parcel because it's all green. It's about half a block, and it has one little garage on it. So the city um, does have that, and we maintain it. Um, probation has a, a really unique approach to use that property. A garden? How big a garden? Um, it would be a raised bed, uh, raised bed gardens. We're looking to start with like four, possibly. Like four by four, eight by eight? Um, four by eight raised beds, um, four of those. That's what we'd like to start with. Um, what age of students or probation kids are gonna be targeting? I'm um, just curious. We we work with children age 10 to 18, um, sometimes a little bit over 18 if they're finishing their supervision. Okay. Um, we also have a new program called Teen Court. Yeah. Uh, summary offenses that come through the magistrate, magistrate's office. Um, they refer to Teen Court. Some of those students would be there as well. So kind of a mixture of students. Um, all different areas. This is unique because it's able, before the transportation was very limited, have to, uh, they have to find rides or we have to take them up. And this way, many of the, um, many of the juveniles can walk there. We can pick up trash on the way there. We can supervise um, the, whole, the whole project. Right. Any other questions? Do I have a motion? A motion and a second. Uh, any other discussion? Call for the vote, please. Councilmember Byron. Yes. Councilmember Conklin. Yes. Councilmember Mazzorti. Yes. Councilmember Stevenson. Yes. Councilmember Breaker. Yes. Councilmember Morris. Yes. Mayor Long. Yes. Or D, the resolution for the jams ban. <laughs> Uh, Carol Thibodeau and Steve Getz here from LH Jams. So, presenting for the Clinton County Arts Council and LH Jams, uh, we have requests that normally we use for the festival. This is our eighth year for the festival, so it will sound similar, but we have new dates. So, this year it runs from August 10th through August 12th. August 10th is the Thursday night event at the Roxy, so we don't need anything special from the city. Um, Friday evening, August 11th, it runs from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. with music from 7 through 10. Saturday, August 12th, runs 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. with music from noon to 10 p.m. 
And our request to city council is for street closures. And we did send this ahead, but I'll go through it. Uh, Main Street from J Street to Vesper Street, pending PennDOT application approval. Uh, Main Street barricades placed at J Street and Vesper Street and Grove Street from Water Street to East, East Church Street. Secondly, we have an open container pending approval of submitted application. Perimeter referred to the map that was sent previously Friday, August 11th to Saturday, August 12th during festival hours. And those hours are Friday, 5 p.m. to 11 p.m. and Saturday, 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. The third item we're requesting is free parking on Saturday, August 12th. Uh, the fourth is the Main Street banner from July 31st to August 12th. And I have a fifth request that came out later on. It's a new event we'd like to add, which is sidewalk art with chalk. And we'd like to do that from Grove to Vesper Street on Main. So we are trying to get an adult professional artist to do sidewalk art, which could take a big chunk of the street and would be a real focal point to bring people into that block. And we'll also have events for children to do their own chalk art that will be presided by members of the Arts Council and people that can help them with that. So we were uh, asking if that's doable on the street itself or if we need to do it on the sidewalk and once that art is done it will be very visible and and you know could be something very interesting that you drive over so what's the procedure we need and how do we you know when we clean it up in that well I, I think that since it's a state highway that may come into play as far as allowing it on the on the street but Greg, you or you were telling me you could probably answer yeah, that they, they definitely don't like other than traffic markings as we down over the last couple of years on uh, longer streets. Yeah, so if we're doing it on Main Street, it becomes an issue that right. way. So with the side streets, like on uh, Little Grove, could we do it on one of the side streets on the pavement or just stick the sidewalk? Uh, that would be easier because it's only under the city's jurisdiction. But um, we can actually all work on some details about that and then get that finalized and come back to council with that one. Um, because it wasn't advertised on the agenda, we can't take action on that one now, um, but we can definitely help finalize that. That sounds exciting. Okay. I think that was the big thing, you know, how is it cleaned up that we have to have the fire company come in and wash it off after the bus pulled over and, and some of those things. So that was, yeah, the procedure that I could do that. And we want to do it safely and you know have it fun for everybody and get more young people involved in the new event. So thank you. That would be helpful. I think downtown here, do we have some art in the parking stalls on Main Street? And they and they had a few different ones. Then they do some work there. <clears throat> of course, they just washed themselves off. And it was just chalk. Yeah. Just wash off. That was for the yeah. Week that was children oriented street yeah, closure. Right, yeah. so, but buses parking stalls might not be big enough for you, right. uh, even though they're what eight foot wide. And 12 yeah, foot we're still researching. I mean, it's uh, we're trying to bring in some professional people that would do some really big things, and you know, depending on their schedule and stuff, we're not far enough along to say absolutely that's going to happen. But it would be quite different than some of the things we've been down in before. But judging from the little nods I see, I think you have the uh, interest of council. I think it's just a matter of working with staff to let it out and bring it back when we're actually able to vote on it because we've been voting on it tonight. That portion of your request, the other stuff that was public, we can. Okay. Thank you very much. Does so anybody have any questions for them on the uh, parts that we can vote on tonight? Can you reveal the bands for jams or are you waiting for a reveal? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're actually been getting pretty close to the. Um, the website updating and stuff. We have some great bands coming. Uh, a couple bands out of Philly, bands out of New Jersey and stuff. Of course, you know, the B Street band that we've collaborated with for the summer conference there is. Um, Valdita will be doing the block party again. Uh, we also have your Street Couple, the Motown band that was here that are coming to do the Roxy event on Thursday night. That'll be fun. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Okay. We have some, yeah, we have some great hands. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Motion for a second to approve the request. Uh, any further discussion at all? Call for the vote, please. Councilmember Bio. Yes. Councilmember Conklin. Yes. Councilmember Resorti. Yes. <laughs> Councilmember Stevenson. Yes. Councilmember Breaker. Yes. Councilmember Morris. Yes. Mayor Long. Yes. 4E. Um, uh, Bree and Tammy, uh, do you want to hold? You don't want me to you go from this. All right. So we have a request from the Clinton County LGBTQ uh, organization that, that would like to request the painting of the pride flags in the crosswalks again for the month of June, as we have in years past. And they would also like to request to hang a pride flag in Triangle Park on the flagpole during June for the celebration of Pride Month. Let me ask the question is, do you mean crosswalks or do you no. mean the stop Just walks? Just the stop walks. Like okay, because it says crosswalks and yeah. that's probably a... Yeah, we didn't, no, no, we didn't the cross, the yeah. stop blocks will work. Stop blocks. Yeah, the stop okay. blocks. So it was just no, meant with crosswalks. In the but, narrative, it's in front. Yeah, that was my error, not theirs. No problem. Any other questions? No. Okay. Questions or anyone? Do I motion? Um, uh, oh, right. I know we, we talked about this last year. And I was looking at the the stipulation what we fall under uh, the destination lock haven comprehensive plan. And I was curious what that was. I didn't have this last year. Um, so I just wanted to read this. Um, falls on page 67 of the recreation strategy, I believe, uh, what I pulled up. Um, but the bullet says reimagining public spaces and outdoor venues to reflect the interest, culture, and identity of the community. So that's the bullet. And the sub subsequential bullet underneath it, to me, when I read this, is this is what that bullet means that we're going to implement passive use, such as walking paths and walking spaces in our community and continue to adapt some of our concert series to reflect public interest. So last year, when we looked at this, um, I didn't have this. I didn't know about the club. I, I did, but I didn't have this up on me at the time. I just don't think this falls under our destination plan. Um, that is justified as uh, as far as painting anything on our streets, regardless of what organization wants to paint stuff on our streets. I just don't think that falls underneath that. That's my opinion on that. Um, secondly, with the flag, I guess I'm a traditionalist. I think American flag is the only flag that should be on the flagpole. I know we have a POW flag up there right now. Um, I just drove by there the other day and I saw this come up. So I was curious to be have another flag up there. I don't know how long the, the PO flag, the W flag has been up there. Um, I don't know if that's something for us to reconsider, maybe doing that during just Veterans Day or when we're in active war. Um, just a thought with that, but that's my thoughts with those two items. Kristen? Do I have a motion on, on the request? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Yes, sir. So I just want to point out when it comes to the flag in Triangle Park, when council approves that, we will do our best to try to ensure to um, live up to council's expectation and put that flag up. The flag rope will have to be examined to see if we can actually add another set so that we would have three flags on that pole. Yeah. Um, which we have not done yet. And it just depends on how that particular rope was installed with the flagpole itself. If it does have the ability to be taken apart to add more pieces, more clips, I should say, then that's what we'll be able to do. But we haven't actually looked at the rope yet, but hopefully it can. So in theory, we could have five or six flags on the flagpole. If we so move. This council's poll. Yeah, I would just comment with what Councilman Brinker says. I mean, I don't have a, a, an issue at all with the, with the overall request, but, and while it may be a, a small issue, and he does bring up a very good point. I mean, the flagpole is technically for the American flag, and it certainly is our purview as council to decide do we want multiple flags on that and what's appropriate in regard to length, timing, and all of that. 
when does it become too much where all of a sudden you have three, four, five flags on there? Um, that, that could be a concern with, with a lot of veterans groups, people that are a little bit more traditionalist, I would fall in that category too. Uh, I would just maybe caution that we really take a look at that where maybe we don't have to set a number, but to go beyond two or three, you know, maybe a little bit too much. Any other comments? Have we ever had any other flags other than those two flags on our flagpole in history? I don't know. Yeah. The Lock Haven University flag um, flew there for several years until the POW flag went up. That's when we took down the LHU flag from beneath the US flag. Anyone else? Questions, comments? If, if I may, uh, Mayor. Yeah. Uh, I, I would challenge, though, that, uh, frankly, the, the, the display on the street, the, the painting, does uh, represent uh, part of our plan, because part of that plan is uh, to show uh, the diversity of our city and support the diversity of our city. Thank you. Any further discussion? I have a motion on the floor and a second. Call for the vote, please. Councilmember Violet. Yes. Councilmember Conklin. Yes. Councilmember Mazzorti. Yes. Councilmember Stevenson. Yes. Councilmember Brinker. No. Councilmember Morris. Yes. Mayor Long. Yes. 4F. Use of North Grove Street. Uh, Sean Dale is here, um, the owner of Old Corner. He is requesting the closure of Grove Street from Willard Alley to Church Street on Friday evenings from Memorial Day to Labor Day from 3 p.m. Um, Friday to Saturday at midnight um, to provide on-street dining and entertainment. Um, I have all of his applications and paperwork and we'll work with Cindy Walker to make sure all of those permits are um, in order and good to go pending. Uh, council approval. I move approval. We have a motion. I have a motion. Um, someone want to make a second, then we'll ask questions. Second. One moment. Anybody want to make a second for the motion? Okay, so we have a second. Go ahead. And basically, she summed it up for me. Um, I'm always looking to uh, bring business into the Lock Haven. Um, you guys can see that I'm actually doing some renovations to the old corner. You know, the new awning went up and uh, we put new flooring in, you know, paint's coming and, you know, it's, I was born and raised here. So that means a lot to me. I mean, I'm looking here at your symbol and we have Lock Haven was incorporated in 1870. My building was built in 1871. So it's very, for me, it's very proud to, to be able to do this in connection with the city. And I'm talking here, I, I think she left, but I want to do, lots of things in the streets this summer. I have the don't have the ability to do it because my place is so small. However, we can turn Church Street, I mean, Grove Street into a dance floor for anything. We can do karaoke, we can do, you know, just a nice outdoor dining. I was talking with the economic partnership. They would like me to host one of their um, mixers, but that's on a Thursday. So I'd have to, I would come back for that approval, but you know, there's some, lots of things that people like in the outdoor during the summer. And I would love to capture that. We were able to capture that with the concert series, but with this year, it's only 3 to 11 on a Friday. You know, where, and I'm flexible. If you don't want to do Friday night, we can do Saturday, Sunday, you know, things like that. But I plan on putting entertainment and, and all the all that stuff downtown to bring the business in as well. Questions? I have actually three questions, Sean. <clears throat> Just for clarification, too. Uh, who's going to open, who's going to close with the barricades and who's going to open them back up at midnight? That would be me. So you'll take responsibility to do that, push them out, because they'll be sitting there anyway. I do it now for the concert series. For the you know, weekend, downtown, yeah. closer. So. Yeah. So you're looking to try to do something every Friday and Saturday night? So on entertainment-wise, uh, yes and no. It all depends on what we can get. But to have, you know, even if I put it down there, on the weekend, one of the nights or whatever. I plan on having something there throughout the summer, yes. Okay, because that's 
I didn't add up to how many weeks it is. But that's pretty ambitious to Absolutely. have something, including your dining, which is okay. Because once you set it out, you like to let it out and use it twice, right. I'm sure. Uh, so, but we didn't want to have it all oh, this week. Sean doesn't want to do anything. So the streets, we don't want to close it if nothing's going on. Yeah, no, we'll definitely have it closed every weekend. Like I said, whether it's we provide the music with our speakers or a DJ or, you know, but just to have the outdoor atmosphere of the dining is what, what I'm getting. Absolutely, which we've been doing for a number of years. The other thing is asking for it till midnight. We do have a noise ordinance and we do have people that, that you know how it vibrates off of those buildings that we have to worry about how late at night we're actually creating noise with a band or a DJ or karaoke or whatever. I can hear somebody down there trying to do karaoke at a quarter of 12. No. It, it, it's a midnight. You'll be. <laughs> I could just hear that screeching. I would. I would cut that between ten and thirty. And okay, because that that's a, a compromise for our residents to yeah. the. But uh, I can see how you'd want to just clean up first and move all your yeah. tables and chairs. But if we stop your event with the vocals a little bit earlier, I think it'll be more acceptable yeah. to. I ten o'clock is acceptable to our people exactly. you know, that yeah. live around that area. I yeah. answer my questions. Any other questions, comments? Uh, yeah. Oh, go ahead, Greg. Go ahead, Greg. You're, you're uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, just the, the only, I think it's a great idea, Sean, and I'm, I'm supportive. My only question is, uh, how, have you spoke with your neighbors? I, I have, yes, I have. The, um, and the patrons of the bar, so the, okay. uh, <laughs> it, which is nice because they come and eat all the time, but uh, right across the street. The top floor and the 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 second floor, they're they're weekly patrons at that time. They're excited. And then to right next to the building next to Willard's Alley, uh, the couple above there, I've had many conversations, and they actually liked when we had the entertainment last year because they could just sit there and listen to it. Well, have, and I, yeah, I appreciate that, but I was thinking more professionally about the biz, other businesses there. I think there's two right on the corner. Sure. As far as the closure, you mean? Yes. Like how it might affect the other business as right. far as closure. Well, you do. I did not talk to Foxes because they're on the other side. But then um, I don't know exactly what's going on with the business rate across the street from me. Um, okay. I noticed they're open some days and they're closed some days. So I don't know if that's like yeah. a, okay. They also have some off-street parking. They do. They have down, a, like kind of like you behind yeah. you on Church Street. They have yeah. um, right. down right. Right. All right, I, I'm satisfied. Thank you. <coughs> Any other questions, Please. comments? I would like us to take more of a coordinated approach to this, and we should decide for the, for this year how much of the city we want to pedestrianize and when, so that it looks like a coordinated plan. This idea of closing a street somewhere because a local business owner wants to use it is not, in my judgment, the best use of a public facility. And I would be extremely ticked off if I wanted to turn into North Grove Street and couldn't because somebody was having a steak and fries in the middle of the street. So, I mean, some time ago we pioneered the use of the, the downtown is essentially a recreational area. And I have no problem with that in concept. I think we need to have a map of what we're going to do and when. Because I don't want to sit here all summer approving piecemeal um, requests, some of which I think <coughs> encroach on the rights of the rest of the citizens to make their way around town. Oh, we have a motion for in a second. Is uh, who made the motion? Was it done? Yeah. Did you want, want to consider changing your motion at all? No. How will that have impact all our other events down there on the weekends, the, the days that we do have that? I'm just curious. I don't know. Well, there's something going on uh, the last weekend, the last Friday of each month. And that's it. Uh, what if we? That's it. What if we? did it every day of the week except for that last Friday. So we're not competing 
so with wait, the other ones, you know. The way we used to you got when it worked in you know, conjunction with the uh, downtown Lock Haven is, is that street was already shut off with the concert series right, because right. I the trailer was right there at Roman Road. Right. Right. right, but you see what I'm saying? Like they wouldn't have entertainment. Why they have it? I started my entertainment after they were finished, but they usually go till ten, so it's hard to do that. Right. So my thought, my my thought was instead of taking from the other experience on Main Street. That you would get the other three days, and then whenever we shut down Main Street, then What's you don't have you don't have the music. You yeah. wouldn't have music that yeah. night. Is it's, it's my understanding that's Street. already part of the right. Right. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah. So okay. as long as we didn't have another competing bands. Yeah. yeah no, they they work yeah. around each other. That yeah, they've always done that. Okay, so I have a motion on the floor and a second uh, that moves the request as it stands. Um, if, unless anybody different has something to say, we'll call for the vote. Councilmember Byerly? Yes. Councilmember Conklin? Yes. Councilmember Mazzorti? Yes. Councilmember Seaman? Yes. Councilmember Brinker? Yes. Councilmember Morris? No. Mayor Long? Yes. 4G, use of Fallon Alley by Main Street Grill. All right, Chris Darwin of the Main Street Grill is requesting to use half of Fallon Alley from Memorial Day to Labor Day to place tables um, along the alley for the Main Street Grill. And I, he has already handed in all of his paperwork and I will work with Cindy to make sure all of those, everything is fine for him as well. And he would be putting boundaries down as well. So, just like when it, the street is closed and you have to mark it off, you would have to do that as well. Well, I would have a question about that one only in the sense that uh, how much of the alley is going to take up because we just went through remodeling the whole alley to be a walkway for pedestrians to come from the, one of the main lots to get downtown. And I, I love the idea. I just want to know, is it still going to be space designated for pedestrians to get through? Yeah, they would be directly against the wall and just one like four top table width sure. down. So it's left and right. It's not front and back in the alley. So they'll take the right side. Right. The, okay. the other question, and Thank I guess it goes back to Sean too, that both of these restaurants, uh, businesses asked for that sidewalk dining thing that we have that the city yeah, has. Yeah, that was like they, that was. The application they handed in as part of that. So they already have part of it because that is that would have been a deciding factor for me. If they didn't do that, then I would not lean towards the approval in the sense they did with Does anybody here say? I don't see Chris. No, he's not here tonight. Um any do I have a motion? So moved. I have a motion. Second. And a second. Any further questions, comments? <clears throat> so he would you still can't envisage exactly what's going to happen. But the side of the alley that he would want to use is the side where we have a fancy new PR. Yes, he did say he will start, he won't start it right next to it. It will start like further down the alley. So it won't be encringing upon our stuff that we have there. It is that side though, Mr. Morris, yeah. the uh, mural side. Right. Yes, rear access to um, Fallon Alley from his restaurant. Yeah. Why doesn't he put a table there? There are two. Part of the redesign. How many how many tables does he want to put in the alley? I'm not positive on that, but I can find that out. It'll be in this application for the sidewalk yeah. alley. And I don't believe it's feasible to put tables in one part of the alley, put the diners around them, and have people serve those tables without encroaching on the other half of the alley. Great. Yeah, I just, just quickly, uh, uh, Councilman Morris, uh, well, that actually happens on Main Street already, uh, uh, down near uh, Stella A's and, uh, frankly, in front of uh, 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 Leo's and in front of uh, 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 the grill already. 
So we're already seeing that on the sidewalk already. So, you know, yeah, is it an inconvenience at times? Absolutely. But is it, does it still, is it still functional? Yeah, it is. So I, it is happening already. Yeah, I know this on, <clears throat> I've wandered into the road top part in front of Stella's and, and couldn't find my way out. So <laughs> I, you, you, you'll notice that I'm not a fan of this plan. And I think the reason I'm not a fan of it is I remember that Main Street Grill was one of the pioneers of having outdoor dining. And at the time, we approved it and supported it because it was a way of substituting for the dining space that these restaurants were having to sacrifice because of the COVID regulations. Right. That's no longer an issue. So now what we're being asked you to do is to devote public space uh, for private purposes. And I'm frankly opposed to that. And the mayor's right. We put an awful lot of money into Power Alley to make it a signature throughway into the downtown. Now it's becoming a picnic area and we have to pick our way around it to get to the rest of town. I, I think this is the thin end a somewhat unfortunate wedge, and I would not support it. Well, I, I would <coughs> comment on it. I, I would say that I think that this actually enhances that because, uh, you know, if, if there's regular use of it, there's going to be somebody regularly cleaning it up, which becomes a problem with that alley a lot of times. And I think if it's getting regularly used, people are using it. It's going to stay clean. It's going to be a nice yeah, addition to, to the downtown going to be, experience. It's going to be cleaned out because it's being picked up. Yeah. Well, let's move on. Just well, give me my input. Any other uh, comments, questions? Call for the vote. Councilmember Byron. Yes. Councilmember Conklin. Yes. Councilmember Missouri. Yes. Councilmember Stevenson. Yes. Councilmember Brinker. Yes. Councilmember Morris. No. Mayor Long. Yes. 4 H. Special Olympic Juice of Petty Park. Um, okay. Uh, the Clinton County Special Olympics is requesting the use of Petty Park beginning in March for softball practice. Now I'll coordinate with the organizers to make sure their schedule works with other groups using the area as well as with the maintenance of the fields. You know, let me last three, you know, mine. Can we just address these last three? You know, one thing I don't think there's really anything there that's a lot of discussion. You want to go give us some yeah. the other two real quick? Uh, Eric Brewhart is requesting use of Petty Park on March 18th and 25th for wildland fire training. And the Frozen Snot is requesting use of Zindel Park on February 3rd. Um, the route is the same as previous years, however. Um, Right now, we're just going to approve the date, and um, the route um, will be approved at a later time um, due to management activities that may be proposed um, that could interfere with the route. Okay, and so that's all three. Do I have a motion to approve the three remaining ones? Uh, move on, please. Second. Second. Motion. And a second. Um, any other questions, comments? Just to be sure. All the vote. Councilmember Byerly. Yes. Councilmember Conklin. Yes. Councilmember Missouri. Yes. Councilmember Stevenson. Yes. Councilmember Brinker. Yes. Councilmember Morris. Yes. Mayor Long. Yes. Any other uh, requests? I could come up with a couple if you want them, but no. Well, they listed on the on the agenda, so we won't be able to vote for them. Anymore. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so uh, we'll move on to unfinished business. Reconsideration of resolution number 1294. This is a request from Councilmember Stevenson. This is a resolution that was adopted by Council, <laughs> excuse me, in 2018 at the request of Suburban Water Authority. Um, it states that external governmental entities will be excused from the, ceases, the fees associated with street excavation permits in the city of Lock Haven. Um, that only applies to Suburban Water Authority. There aren't any other 
external governmental entities that serve. Um, they still were required to file permits with the city. Did they regularly do that? Yes. And the cost of the fee waiver in general? Um, depends on the execution. So it's the, the fees set up to be per square foot. Typically, I think it's $163 for the first 36 square feet and then an additional um, 22 square feet with that hundred sixty. There's an app that it's not hard to <laughs> yeah. For example, the Sunset Pines excavation that they had done. Uh, the Sunset Pines would have been upwards of $3,600. If I'm correct, uh, and tell me and pretty well. Since this is a resolution, this only takes one reading. It's not like two readings, right? Uh, no, this to undo the resolution, you just have to make a motion to um, withdraw the, the resolution. Unlike an ordinance, it doesn't have a penalty. Right. And so it can just be, it's a rule. You know, so so the right. council can undo its rule. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. If it so chose. At the time we discussed it before, I argued the point that we should make it the same for all, no matter who it is, whether it's a government entity or whoever, it still costs our city taxpayers dollars to go out and manage and, and monitor that excavation and follow up. And it's not a money maker, it's a break even on the fees for that square footage. So we do that with all the other departments too. We've asked them over the last few years to structure the fees, whether it's for codes, no matter what it's for, to try to just break even. And then because, and that saves all the taxpayers, it's a user fee. And I believe that it should, this should be also. And so I would like to make the motion to uh, remove the uh, resolution 1294. Well, just a point of order. Okay. Um, if he voted against when we passed this, he can't make the motion to reconsider it, can he? Has to come from somebody who actually voted for the motion. Did you vote against it at the time? I don't. I don't know. I'm thinking. I argued against it. Uh, I don't know if I voted against it or not, and I'm not sure that's. I can go upstairs. Well, if, if we have yeah, someone else motion motion to make a motion, we get around that anyway. So, does anyone else want to make the motion? I got two questions. One, why did we adopt this in 2018? What 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 was the reason behind it? And number two, how many um, opportunities does Suburban Water Authority uh, get? I mean, do they come to us five times, ten times, twenty times a year? I don't know. Other times, around a dozen. Um, I can't beat that right now. I mean, it's, it's yeah. perfect. Yeah, if I can pull that through, I just can't. Because to answer your the first question, out of a sense of cooperation, we obviously haven't received the reason. But I, I will say, um, even at that time, um, uh, when suburban came to ask for the waiver of fees, the city does pay that fee. So our own water department pays the general fund for street excavations because it takes general fund employees time to go out and review that excavation, categorize it. Um, they track it in GPS. They have to go back in the course of a year and monitor it to make sure it hasn't failed. Those are all general fund taxpayer paid people. So when our sewer department makes an excavation, the sewer fund fills out an application just like UGI does. And the sewer fund pays the general fund for that service. The same is true of the city's water fund. Uh, the only entity that's a public utility that doesn't pay this is Suburban. All other utilities in the city do. And that's what I wanted to correct to make it fair for everybody. Since we're doing it, everybody should do it. I will make that motion for some. I have a motion to move, Steve. And I'll second. And a second. Any further discussion? Call for the vote. Councilmember Byerly. Yes. Councilmember Conklin. Yes. Yes. Councilmember Missouri. Yes. Councilmember Stevenson. Yes. Councilmember Brinker. Yes. Councilmember Morris. No. Mayor Long. Yes.
5B, announcement of the Ross Library receiving Keystone Grant. Uh, the Ross Library was awarded $82,800 in grant funding. Um, they will be using this for APAC improvements um, and they have, they have some other odds and ends, um, but just got that award on the 24th. So, once we pass that along. Thank you. And, uh, oh, go ahead. Uh, on that topic, the library did a lot of the legwork on that. So a lot of congratulations to them for their hard work. It does come in the city's name, but they, they work very diligently. Good to hear. Thank you. I see. Notice the 2023 state liquid fuels tax to the city. The city received $228,741 in liquid fuels, as well as the annual $5,400 in road turnback. Uh, that has been placed into the city's liquid fuels highway aid account, and that money is designated by count by council for use in sunset fines. We have any other unfinished business? I had none, Your Honor. New business approval to solicit for proposals for the aviation engineering services. Um, I'm asking for permission to go out for. For proposals for engineering services for the Lockheed Airport. We previously um, worked with GAI, who uh, they no longer have do airport engineering. So we need to go outside out for a new engineer. Um, I've been working with BOA to get a list of engineers and if approved, we'll and aim to get it out this week and an award the next month. Which council? And then approval by second. And motion for a second. Any further discussion? Just one question, uh, Abby. Uh, is, does CETACOG offer that kind of uh, engineering? I do not believe so. Okay. All right. Because they, they're pretty extensive, but you, you're probably right. Thank you. Yeah, it's somewhat special. Okay. Um, no other questions? Call for the vote. Councilmember Byerly? Yes. Councilmember Thompson? Yes. Councilmember Missouri? Yes. Councilmember Stevenson? Yes. Councilmember Breaker? Yes. Councilmember Morris? Yes. Mayor Long? Yes. 6B, award the skate park engineering services. That's the skate park project, um, just engineering services for the Lockheed and Skate Park is put out to bid. Um, we had to do this competitively so we can pay it from the CDBG and CDB funds. Um, it was reviewed by myself, Tony, Casey, and Gina Dietrich from the Planning Commission. Um, all three proposals and color engineers uh, was the highest board. So recommend um, contracting for engineering design and oversight services to color engineers for the Washington Skate Park Project. Um, if approved, um, oh, I'm sorry, the lump sum price of that is $74,750. Um, if approved, we'll move forward with contracting um, as quick as possible because we have a very tight timeline to hit the state park. So. Switch council? I move approval. Second. Motion to floor and a second. Any further discussion? All for the vote. Councilmember Riley? Yes. Councilmember Conklin. Excitedly, yes. Councilmember Mazzorti? Yes. Councilmember Stevenson? Yes. Councilmember Breaker? Yes. Councilmember Morris? Yes. Mayor Long? Yes. Agreed, great. 6C, notice of the selection uh, for DEP land recycling program. The city has been selected by DEP for a brownfield assessment. And that's a grant that is coming from the federal government to DEP. And we are one of 15 municipalities that was selected in that process. Um, in Pennsylvania, brownfields um, can come in a variety of ways. Maybe the most simple is an underground tank that's still underground but unused. So uh, what this project will do is help Lock Haven identify what the brownfields are, and it'll also help prioritize them for um, what would have the biggest economic impact 
if it were to be addressed. It has no cost to the city. Six D award levy relief well testing. Um, it looks like I attached the wrong document to this. So I'm trying to pull up the one right now. Give me a second. Um, so we slipped it for bid for the lemon relief well. Um, and I'm so sorry. All right. I see two bits here. Yeah. I um uh, trying to read. I gave it a long uh, uh council amendment request. All right, two bits received for lender leaf well testing through rehab. Um, so this bid is broken down based on the amount of wells to test and then the reconditioning and rehab of the wells as needed. Uh back in 2017, there were only five wells that needed rehab. So hopefully this year uh, we don't have any. Uh, so my recommendation is to approve project 2023-02 um, to G Junian and Geosciences in the amount of 30,420. That's a motion too, because it may not, right. it may not require that. Okay. Do I have a motion? So <laughs> I'll second it. Okay, a motion floor and a second. Any further questions, discussion? Call for the vote. Councilmember Byerly. Yes. Councilmember Conkle. Yes. Councilmember Mazzorti. Yes. Councilmember Stevenson. Yes. Councilmember Brinker. Yes. <clears throat> Councilmember Morris. Yes. Mayor Long. Yes. Six C. We were discussing this a little bit earlier. Notice the public hearing by PLCB for the noise ordinance. The um, last meeting of City Council, Council approved the resolution to request that the Liquor Control Board make an exemption and permit the city to enforce its noise ordinance instead of uh, LCB enforcing its noise ordinance or noise article. Uh, the public hearing for that request will be on March 21st at 1 p.m. right here in this room. And so anyone from the public who's interested in uh, being heard is able to attend the meeting. And say the 21st or 24th? 24th. It's March 24th at 20 at 1 p.m. We back. Good. 6F consideration of appointment of three members of council for the subcommittee to meet with Suburban Water Authority. Suburban Water Authority has requested a meeting with members of city council. And so uh, we're here to request that three individuals from city council would become a subcommittee to meet with a uh, subcommittee of suburban as well. I'll do it. Like <laughs> Steve, is Rick on that? No, no, this so is not just give our rep though. No, he's a rep to the sewer, sewer, the sewer authority. authority. Yeah. We don't have a rep on suburban water. No. Well, maybe I'll elbow my way past all the other volunteers and then. Um... <laughs> I think well, I should be on it. I think I should be on it. Yeah. I think that's who they asked you like, originally, anyway. <sighs> so I, I guess the other you know, three, Richard, Barb, and myself. No morning meetings. <laughs> so 8 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Only if I can have an overnight. <laughs> All right. So, um, someone would make motion that effect. I move we point those three mentioned to uh, a committee to meet with suburban water authority. Second. Motion on the floor and a second. Any further discussion? Call for the vote. Councilmember Riley. Yes. Councilmember Conklin. Yes. Councilmember Mazzorti. Yes. Councilmember Stevenson. Yes. Councilmember Brinker. Yes. Councilmember Morris. Yes. Mayor Long. Yes. Some G, consideration of the appointment of Wendy Spiker to the Safety Committee. Wendy Spiker, the Administrative Secretary, um, if appointed by Council, will fill a vacancy. The Safety Committee is certified by the Pennsylvania Department of Labor and Industry for the city. 
it has three employee representatives and three representatives who um, act on behalf of the employer and they tour all city facilities one per month um, throughout the community and they also address um, every time that we have some kind of accident with property or we have an accident with an employee they review all of those items and come up with recommendations to improve safety in the city uh, motion Move forward. Second. Motion and a second. Any other further discussion? All for the vote. Councilmember Byron. Yes. Councilmember Conklin. Yes. Councilmember Mazzorti. Yes. Councilmember Stevenson. Yes. Councilmember Brinker. Yes. Councilmember Morris. Yes. Mayor Lark. Yes. Six H consideration of engagement with Baker Tilly to perform the 2020 2022. Audit and the amount not to exceed 49800 You can stare at me all you want, Mr. Morris, but water always finds the easiest path. So uh, Richard Morris had asked that this be bid, but yet again, uh, that did not happen. So uh, the most expedient way forward is the proposal from Baker Tilly. I have been in contact with um, a consultant who does we used to work for Mardusel, which is another auditing firm who um, has pledged to provide me with a model um, bid spec to go forward for next year's fiscal year. Richard, you can come back just to that meeting. How many years of vacancy now? Well, they've been a variety of names, but I would say if I said 20 years, that's not exaggerating. So I should not feel guilty about not having read the whole of their proposal. <laughs> it, it's incredibly similar to the other 20 plus. I, I did notice they were maintaining professional skepticism. So. <laughs> I mean, I, the, the, I, I think there is an open question about whether organizations such as Asbury could continue to use the same order. Um, because sometimes there is a sense that familiarity may be contempt. Um, the other argument is why retrain a new auditor every time we need to be audited? So. Well, you, we deal with that on a regular basis. I'm not, <clears throat> I'm not opposed to this. I, I would only respond that uh, we do not train auditors. They train us very well. Oh, okay. And so uh, we know what hoops to jump through and what balls to stand on in dance. So um, that would probably be the only learning curve is with a new auditor, they'll have new hoops and new balls. So we... Um, do know from them what kind of documents they like to see and, and that kind of thing. Um, it doesn't make it the only way forward, but this year it's the um, most expedient way forward. Richard, would you like to make the motion? I would be delighted to make the motion. Do I have a second? Second. Oh, second. Floor, a second. Any other discussion? This is a one year contract. Yeah, then? one year only. Okay. We have a motion and a second call for the vote. Councilmember Byerly. Yes. Councilmember Conklin. Yes. Councilmember Mazzorti. Yes. Councilmember Stevenson. Yes. Councilmember Brinker. Yes. Councilmember Morris. Dramatic pause. Yeah. <laughs> Mayor Long. Yes, very dramatic since you made the motion. <laughs> Six I, consideration of ordinance number 2023-02. Never a fun day. Um, because of the Superior Court um, ruling on the case of the Borough of Westchester versus the Pennsylvania State System of Higher Education, which has now been appealed to the Pennsylvania Supreme Court regarding the collection of stormwater management fees, um, whether or not that is feasible to be done, it creates a situation where the city uh, would be best served by not choosing to collect that fee until after that case is settled. Originally in December, city council adopted a budget for the stormwater management fee of $478,000. That's much more conservative, thank God, 
than the engineers had proposed would be received. So uh, what this ordinance does, and this would be the first reading and it would still need to be advertised and have a public hearing, but it eliminates the stormwater management fund, which is fund 14 in the amount of $478,000 and then knits that into the general fund. In part, um, it reduces the amount that is anticipated to be spent on stormwater uh, infrastructure from 124,000 down to 20,000. It also eliminates this year's annual fund uh, 48, which is the capital reserve fund, or not the capital, the general fund reserve. So every year until we get to 17%, the city's financial policy um, is that we will transfer 1% of specific general operating expenses into that fund. So this year that would be suspended. It was uh, previously suspended during COVID and then I repaid it. So it does have um, a balance in it. So it is not empty. It does have a, about 200,000 in it if it truly pours. Um, and then it reduces the capital expenditures for general fund benefit from 186,000 down to 44,000, which will remove the fund balance and lower that from the original proposed 297,000 left at the end of the year to 101,000 left at the end of the year. So this again is an example of um, needing to find the most expedient way forward that doesn't have a major impact on operations. So it does have an impact on capital. It does have an impact on quote unquote savings, although we don't have a lot of those to begin with. Um, but it doesn't have an impact on people. And as we point out during the budget, 85% of the city's taxes go to people and those people do the work. So it does enable us to still get out and do some work. It won't be a lot of the capital work that you normally see, um, but at the same time, we've been exceptionally successful, not we, but the city planner has been exceptionally successful in getting 1.9 million to redo a park to get a couple, about well, more than well over half a million dollars to redo Tagger. Um, and looking into another grant for that. So there are definitely improvements taking place that people will be able to put their hands on and see that progress is being made in the community for the public good. Um, this is, <clears throat> again, uh, it does cut some of the capital funding from this year and will give council an opportunity to um, constantly keep their finger on the quarterly and biannual budget reports and also the monthly uh, cash report that comes to council on the second meeting of every month. Any, um, any inside information about the Westchester case? Uh, I don't hear anything. Did they set a date or anything? Uh, yeah. They just, um, they just filed on the 1st of February. They had till the 3rd of February to file an appeal. So they filed on the 1st. Um, at least they did file an appeal, uh, Westchester Borough, which is to the benefit of all municipalities. It's a pretty significant impact. Um, you know, well over 100, if not well over that, municipalities collect a stormwater management fee. Uh, the city is not on, you know, the cutting edge of that. Uh, we're a Johnny come lately, if anything. Um, I would say at least since 2012 or 13, Lancaster has collected that. So now to be told that they should not be collecting that until the court decides, that's pretty significant. They've redone hundreds of millions of dollars worth of infrastructure um, throughout the state with the stormwater management fee, which is the most equitable way to collect um, a fee for that service, which is a pipe under the ground that carries away your water from your property. <clears throat> so until we 
hear more, but it took about two years for the case to even make it before the Superior Court. Uh, and I would hope uh, on my part, but again, hoping is what it is. I would hope that uh, that Lancaster sends uh, a couple of people to testify at the Supreme Court level, because frankly, they have been on the cutting edge um, for uh, most of the last uh, decade and a half on stormwater management. And uh, uh, and uh, they would know more than anybody what this is going to cost them. Uh, and it's... Uh, it's damaging to their economy for sure, but that's only rhetoric. So there are times that a little rhetoric is needed. Um, so we have an ordinance in front of us. Do I have a motion to uh, put that? I'll introduce the ordinance 2023 02. Second. Motion floor and a second. And any other discussion? Well, I correct you because. Somebody has to be the smart ass around the town. It's actually <laughs> common, the Commonwealth Court that heard this and made a mess of it. Oh, no. thank you. <laughs> and, and I don't know where it goes from here. I mean, it was a very narrow decision. All the Commonwealth Court said was that Westchester University does not have to pay this fee. Um, if the Supreme Court reverses that decision, then we're off to the races. If they simply uphold it, they still only said that Westchester University does not have to pay this fee because it's a tax. The question that remains unanswered, which throws all the municipalities for a loop, is if it is a tax, the next question is, is it a tax within the scope of taxes that local municipalities are allowed to levy? And the Commonwealth Court did not address that. And if the Supreme Court addresses only the question before it, then they won't address it either. So we're left. The Commonwealth Court did say that any municipality who has authorization to collect such a fee may do so, but it's not most listed in the Local Tax Enabling Act, right. and it's not listed as one of the uh, valid taxes that are called out specifically in each of the municipal codes. So that's it does why, create this quandary. That's why it's called a fee, and nobody's part of the tax. I mean, they pay the fee for electricity, they pay a fee for their phones, they pay a fee for everything they else. They pay a fee for water. Uh, yeah, and a run for the problem. Yeah, so you soon the one free water and sewer. I mean, traditional oversimplification, but if it's not listed in your code and it's not listed in the local tax enabling act, which I'll grant you is archaic, then it's got to be a fee because we've defined what the taxes are. They're in particular laws, they're codified. Those are the taxes. So if it's not that and you can calculate how to get the money back, just like we do with um, excavation permits. You know, we actually have calculations on that. How many minutes does the clerk spend? How much is the piece of paper that you get this printed on is in there? So we know how much that is, and you charge a fair and reasonable price. Um, that's what the definition of the fee is. So it does kind of create a, a situation where we have to wait and see what is addressed. Okay, so we have a motion on floor and a second. And my only other question would be, um, although we have reduced, in the way that you described, pretty much most of the expenditure on operating supplies, we still have, and this is probably because it's an accounting nightmare to do it any, any other way, we still carried over all the personnel costs. Right. With the exception of FICA, which has gone down for some reason. It actually went down on one line, but went up on another. Oh, really? Yes. <clears throat> so FICA went up under DPW administration. Right. 
because you'll see down under stormwater clerical staff does not appear in the stormwater section of the general fund budget. It appears in DPW administration. Oh, okay. So Peter and Paul swap. Okay. Um, these are all personnel costs that used to be borne solely by the general fund prior to the creation of fund 14. So we put them back. Right. Okay. Any other questions? Call for the vote. Councilmember Byer. Yes. Councilmember Conklin. Yes. Councilmember Missouri. Yes. Councilmember Stevenson. Yes. Councilmember Brinker. Yes. Councilmember Morris. Yes. Mayor Long. Yes. Seven J for consideration of the 2023 capital improvement program. Uh, tonight, presenting to council just two capital improvement programs. Um, one is still up in the air because of the ordinance we just adopted, which is the general fund. So tonight I just want to provide for council's um, review, and then we'll discuss it in greater detail at the next meeting. The water capital projects. This is water capital projects that many of which you're familiar with, including um, Keller Dam's reconstruction, the drilling of the supplemental water wells and the subsequent pipeline to go up to the filtration plant. Um, we also have a variety of other projects that will need to be done kind of post that. Uh, one of the largest is the replacement of the 16 inch raw water main from Keller to the filtration plant. And that goes through Lenape Village. Um, as part of that, the master PRV station, which are the pressure reducing valve um, the station will be upgraded. So these are shared costs, and those are debts that are covered percent of total by flow between the city and suburban water authority. So if we say the city is 60% of all the water taken from Keller Reservoir, suburban will pay 40% of those costs under the cost sharing agreement. There are also city only projects that are. Uh, just about $3 million. And that includes the removal of the upper Castanea Dam, uh, which is not part of the city's water system, and the Zindel Park Bridge replacement. Both of those bridges in Zindel Park will need to be replaced in order to get construction equipment over um, to do the work in Keller. Those will, at the end, still be city bridges, not shared bridges. So that is a city only cost. We were able to work with the engineering firm and find a commercial timber bridge company that's in York, Pennsylvania. And so they will be able to replace those bridges with very attractive timber bridges, um, which will add to the aesthetics of the area instead of detract from it. And that actually costs the same. Uh, their estimate is the same as just doing cement box culvert with Jersey barrier. So um, that'll be very nice. Um, we also have the acquisition of the land on which the wells will sit. And that will, once acquired, be city only land. So that, of course, is a city only cost. And the hydraulic study, which is being done this year, um, is 5,000. So some of these items that are either shared or city only, just because it says the way that those can be funded is through either a note or bond or PENVEST does not mean that's the only way those can be funded. We do seek grants for those things. We also seek direct federal funding uh, through uh, Senator Casey's office and Sen or Representative Thompson's office. Uh, the next page is the sewer capital project. And the sewer plants, uh, is the only aspect of sewer that is shared costs. And that's again, based on percent of total flow. So uh, things like the screen repairs, which the screens cost $300,000. The UV disinfection system is actually aged out already and parts are no longer manufactured for it. That is a $1.2 million current estimate for replacement. So those would be things you'd have to borrow from PENVAS for, and then that would be part of the debt service that the partnering 
uh, municipalities and authorities reimburse the city for. Currently, they're about 65% of the total flow, and the city is about 45%, uh, or 55 or 45, sorry. And so, um, as long as that were to remain the case, then <clears throat> the other partners do have a larger share, but it is all debt in the city's name. The city only projects, those are ones that have to come from either capital improvement funds, the American Rescue Plan funds that remain, or uh, some other source such as a grant. So the city did seek uh, Susquehanna Avenue sewer main replacement grant. Uh, if that were to come to fruition, that would be a huge boost. And that would remove that from having to find an, an internal source of funding, which predominantly, when you're looking at sewer and water, if you can't get the money from a grant, it's going to have to come from the user fee. So as part of the analysis of the city's water fee, what you're looking at for these water capital projects has been provided to the uh, institution that's doing that study so that they're aware long-term what kind of cost you're looking at. Next meeting. We'll go over this and any questions that you have, and you'll also receive a similar worksheet, but for the general fund. Then the first meeting in April, we'll discuss the general fund in more detail. Um, that being said, I don't think probably people have a lot of requests for water and sewer other than regular line replacement, which is something we'd always love to do. Um, Tony had done a calculation when he first arrived you replace all of the city's water lines over the course of the next 40 years was $400,000 a year. To replace all the sewer lines over the next 40 years was $800,000 a year. We spend maybe 100,000 would be a max, but mostly we spend maybe 10 to 20,000. Um, so we're not keeping up with that. Um, How quickly it wears out. Exactly. But I would imagine that people have, especially this year where a lot of council members are coming face to face with a lot of people, um, some requests for the way that we could expend from the general fund. Those are things like paving and parks and, and that kind of thing. So if you have any of those requests, um, while we're still finalizing the general fund, we can try to see if we can fit some of those in. And if you have them and want to share them tonight, or if you want to email me what some of those requests are, I'll do my best to fit what we can in, bearing in mind that we just eliminated 140,000 from this year's capital improvements. But it does still have a fund balance. Um, some of that is reserved for the traffic signals. Um, that'll start late in this year. So not all of the money that's the city share for the second avenue and lhg traffic signals has to be expended this year and so um, we'll just try to do the best we can knowing that it's still a busy year we got a lot of projects going on as you can tell especially by all your weekly updates big moves any other new business I have none. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we have the minutes from several different boards and so on. People can review. We can skip down the uh, Wayne Township special uh, collection for landfill. Take a jump. That was at 7F or 780. Yes, those were the minutes for car collection and hazardous waste collection. Yep, dates. The residential tire collection uh, will take place May 12th and 13th at the Recycling Center in Wayne Township, and also at the Recycling Center on July 8th will be Household Hazardous Waste. More information on both of those collections can be found at the uh, Wayne Township Landfill website, and they'll also be advertising those in the newspaper. Mm -hmm. In the old damn phase one construction. A lot of moving and shaking up at all. Mostly shaking cement, as it says. 
it's a sight to see if you guys ever make it up there. So that's all the old uh, uh, drainage is all solid rock. That's pretty neat to see it. They step their way down all the way. The old causeway? Yeah. Um, update on the YMCA pool. I received an email from Beth Bartlett that um, they anticipate that uh, on March 8th, the YMCA pool will be reopened. I haven't heard any updates since February 28th, which is the date of this. Um, hopefully that's still the case, but I know that it's been a, a long time coming. And a lot of parties, including the city, have put in a, a lot of money to see that pool will reopen. Um, at the legislative breakfast. Yes, thank you to council members who responded that they were interested in attending. Um, we were able to reserve tickets. I know that it's um, been this last Wednesday. I think they only had 30 tickets left. It's a full event. And the HRI, Sunset Pines. Fun uh, HRI, stuff. HRI plans to start March 27th and they'll be finished by May 5th. And that will be Sunset Pines from on Silver Drive from Hill Street to Bear Drive. So for those of you in Sunset Pines, there is progress going on. Not as quickly as we'd like, but there's something happening. So thank you. Uh, Anyone else have anything to bring before council this evening? I have a, a question. Go ahead. Just a question for, for uh, the manager. Greg, yes. what was the amount that we uh, suggested to Senator Casey's office that may be helpful for a grant to the water department? Do you remember? Uh, most recently, we are asking for um we will be asking for the between seven and eight hundred thousand dollars to remove the upper castanilla okay Damn. um previously what did we talk to liz about it didn't make the funding though didn't make the cut no out of last year's they're just accepting now for this year's allocations. Okay. All right. Anything else, Rick? If you run into him. Well, I'm scheduled to see him on Wednesday mornings. <laughs> well, he liked his social visit. So. Uh, social justice issues, of course, but I'd be happy to slip something else in. Good. Anyone else have anything to ask? We will be holding an executive session immediately following this meeting, personnel issues. Do I have a motion to adjourn? You do. 